everyone. It's Donnell McAdams and Megan, and tonight we're going to be doing a shamrock circular table mat, and I'm really excited about this. I think we're going to have a lot of fun with it. Um, this is the handout, and obviously you have a second page there, and I think as I'm going through, you'll probably want to jot some notes down. It's not going to be hard. Maybe you'll want to draw a couple of pictures and write a couple of numbers on there. But I am going to be using the um, hearts template. I'm going to use the three inch um, because that one came in a couple of sets by itself. Obviously, you can purchase it alone or you can purchase the whole set. I do have the whole set of hearts, and so we could, you know, we could use different sizes. But that's the one that's going to work great for us tonight. Now, we're over at the cutting table right now, and we're going to swing around to where we're pressing because I'm gonna show you a couple of things before we actually get started with the marking and everything. And so let's just swing around here, Megan, to the pressing area. And I wanna say hello. A lot of you have always said I'd like to see who you are. And so I decided tonight, since we're gonna be pressing, that we would just um, do this so you could see what's going on. So this is gonna be my front piece. So it takes three pieces of fabric. This is my front piece, and I have pressed it. Now, some of you have heard me talk about pre-shrinking, and I pre-shrink with a dry iron and a water. So I've got my water in this spray bottle here, and so I'm just gonna spray water on there, and I find that my iron lasts longer if I don't use it as a steam iron. Now that may sound crazy to some of you, it's totally up to you, but this will obviously shrink your fabric if you need to have, um, you know, you, you need to do that. And honestly, I was teaching the beginner class this week and one of the uh, people that's in the class contacted me and said, I really didn't even believe you when it, you said it would shrink, but she said it did. And if you're in that beginner class and yours has shrunk a little bit from the size, don't worry because we cut them oversized anyway, so you'll be fine. So I'm just spraying water on that. You'll notice I've labeled my bottle. We just want you to know it's, it's probably hard to hear because we're a little bit of a distance right now, um, but we're working on it. Well, just a second then. Mm -mm. So test, test, did that make it better? Hope I don't iron over my cord. So we'll see if that made it any better. Give us some love if it did. So while I'm pressing this, obviously I have it on a high temperature setting because it's a cotton fabric. And it is not only getting my fabric pre-shrunk, but it's obviously getting it ready to do our project. Now, after I have done that for the shrinking part, this is the front. And I am going to put some topping, so to speak. You've heard me talk about using something to put a barrier. Now, you can either use Starch Savvy or Best Press. Or the new one I introduced you to, I think last week, is called Easy Press. So any of those will work. Don't you love how she had to label them, guys? I'm just so glad she labeled them. Yeah, that's the only thing you can do is label them. So I'm press spraying that on there. They love the quilt that's behind you. Oh, well, th thank you. That was a block of the month. A couple of, oh, I don't know how many years ago, to be honest with you. So once we get this pressed, we will move it down and I will show you. You can see how it's kind of like even stiffer right now. And that's putting a barrier on my fabric 
so that I can then mark on it with my Frixon marker. I'm going to be using black today because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. A little bit more of the easy press or best press, whatever you want to be using. It's a dry iron again. These pieces, as you can see on the handout, are 26 inches square. So is the volume better? Much better. They Perfect. Like that. Good. Do you mind while you're doing that? A lot of them want to know how you hung that. Can I do a pan up? Sure. Do I need to move? Nope. You're fine. I'm just going to pan up. So for those that are interested, that is how Donnell has hung her quilts on the wall. You can tell this studio was made specifically for her quilts. It's a 12 foot ceiling so that I can hang full size quilts. If you want to pan over there, you can show them I that did. one too. All right, so I've got this one pressed. This one is ready to go, and I want to make sure I remember it's my front. And then I'm going to come back around here. And what I have ready here, this is going to be my peeker fabric. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of quilting, a little bit of template quilting, a little bit of uh, everything on this. And so on the peeker, peeker fabric, Make yourself a note, that's the one that the fusible gets fused to. And I've already fused this. And again, I like to use a hot iron. Work from the front. So you're going to put the fusible side up. This side is the right side, so the wrong side is attached to the fusible. Spray with your water and then use your iron. So this one is all ready to go. This is my backing fabric, and all I did with it was it had a crease where it was folded, and I used my best press. I think best press is the best one to get that crease out. So I have a use for all four of those. So that's one reason I wanted to talk to you about that tonight. So this is my backing, and while I've got it here, I am going to find my middle. So I folded it in a triangle and over again. Am I in a good spot for them to see? I think so. Okay. So I'm going to mark it this way. And then I'm simply going to mark it this way. That's the easiest way to find a center when you've got just a piece of fabric and it doesn't have anything else. And so now there's my center, right like that. So I'm just going to lay this aside and you're going to see how I got ready for tonight's project. So I used just what they call meat paper. It's like what you can get in big rolls. And I taped it together. The tape happens to be on the back. You can see that shiny side there. And I marked my center. And I knew that I was going to do this as a 25 inch finished circle. That's why you guys have 26 written down there. Because we're going to make it a 25 inch finished circle. And so what I did was I found the lines and you can see on my mat here, I've got diagonal lines here. And so all I did was I placed this, I measured up from the bottom my 12 and a half inches right here. And I put a little mark there in the center. And then I simply placed it on one of those diagonal lines. Now that's out of your view, but it was over there for me. So I'm just telling you about it. And once I got that on there, then I made a line straight up and across. Now it's been erased now because I did it with my Frixon marker. And when I got done doing what I was doing, I just pressed it out. In other words, it'll iron off on paper the same way. Okay, so what I've done 
is I found that center, and I'll show you how I did it. There's a straight line, and there's my straight line. And then I went at a diagonal with my long ruler, okay? So I just took my long ruler, which has a diagonal on it down here at the bottom, so that I could put that right on that line like that. Now you'll notice I used one of my little 12 and a half inch rulers and I taped it on the top so now I can make my ruler longer. So I basically have a hinged ruler so that I can do this. So this diagonal like this is right on the line I drew. And then I just drew from side like this down, only needed one line. And then I just move this around to the next one right here, right in the center, right on the line, and drew that line through there. So I had this line, and I had the one going this way which I'll probably have to get my head right in there so you can count my gray hairs. So now I have those two lines and that's really all that I need. That's what I'm going to be marking on my fabric here in just a moment. But I wanted you to see how I got ready to decide what I was doing here. The distance from the center right here to the center of my design is eight inches. So you may want to make a mark of that also. Now I've already cut my seven inch squares of the new uh, Templey Fuse that so, so Steady carries. And this, I want you to make sure that when you get it, you understand this is only a medium heat when we put it on, and I'll be putting it on in just a minute. But what I did was, this is how I knew that I needed seven inches. I just drew an X on a plain piece of paper and set it on here like this to find out where it crossed there so I would have it all covered. Because everybody always wants to know, well, how do you know seven inches or whatever you're doing? And it, you know, you have to do some measuring to get started. So if you're writing this down, you know that from here to the bottom, is 12 and a half inches. So I'll write that on there. I think you can see it. And then from the center to the middle of my design is eight inches. And then all I need is this great big X drawn on my, this case, the paper, but I'm gonna be drawing it on my fabric. So let's go to that fabric. I thought it would be easier for you to understand on the paper before we went to the fabric. So here's my fabric. And this my, is the top. This is the top. This is the one I put the extra layer on so I can draw with my marker and iron it off. And so I'm going to get that ruler extension that I have. I'm going to put it, can they see that corner up there, Megan? Yes. Okay. I'm going to do that and then I'm just going to, I just have clear tape, of, you know, like packing tape. And I'm going to go right down to that corner. And so I'm going to draw, I don't have to draw clear into the corner because I'm making a circle. I hope you can see that. I can see it. If not, I'll try a different color. And then we're going to go this way. Let's see if I've got another one. Oh, I think that's going to be better. Let 
I can see them, but I know you can't, so that's why I'm going a couple of times. Oh, that's way better. All right, let's do this one again then. All right, so we've got that on there. And now what we want to do is we are going to be measuring. And so don't let this confuse you guys, OK? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the very join where this is, because that's where my diagonal line is. And since I can't see through this like I could my paper, I need to have a line out here, straight out. And it needs to be marked at 8 inches. So I'm going to set that on there. And right here is my 8 inch mark. All right. Now I'm going to turn it this way. And I'm going to leave it like this so maybe you can see it in a little different way. This is my diagonal on my ruler. And I'm using my ruler and its markings to get everything straight. So I'm coming out, and I'm marking at 8 inches. So I'm going to rotate my ruler one more time. I'm going to set it right there on the center. Hold this in place. Mark out. And at 8 inches, make a mark. Now, I will tell you, this ruler is now available through so Study. So it's called the 12 and a half inch centering ruler. And you can get that through so Study now. Super excited about that, because I use this ruler all the time. And the shopping cart has been put in the pinned link, but it is also on your handout. All right, so you can see I've got an X through the center, and I've measured out and made a line 8 inches on each of those. Now, for my quilting, this is my top, and I need to lay this. Well, i got to move this over, okay? I need to lay this upside down on my ironing board because I am going to be putting these on the wrong side which unfortunately means I have to kind of repeat what I just did. I need it on the front for my quilting, but I also need it on the back to know where to place my stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this again. And remember, this is not rocket science, OK? So if the spot is off a little bit from front to back. It is not matter at all. So really all I need is that much of my X so I can come in here and measure again. And I'm going to show you a little way that saves so much time. This is lined up from the very corner out here, and that's on the 45. When I draw down this way, I put my 1 right there on my ruler. And this is my 8 up here. Well, guess what? I have measurements on my other ruler that all I have to do is go up here and mark my 8. So I've got that marking done all in one step. Question. Won't you lose your lines on the front when you iron this on? Yes, but I'm going to try and stay out of those areas, and you'll see why in just a second. But that's a great observation. So understand, you'll sh I'll show you why you don't have to lose your lines. So, but great observation. So I'm going to set this back on so it's on that diagonal right in the center. Draw out the line. There's the eight and a half. Boom. All right. I think you'll like that little extra ruler hit there. So just remember, if you put the ones together, so in other words, 
where I taped it, that's the zero line on both of those rulers, so we can measure out both ways. All right, so what we're going to be doing is taking this centerpiece. I got to get some pins. Maybe Megan can get those for me, just some straight pins. It's going to go on in a, di um, a diamond, so to speak. In other words, we're setting it on point. So I put that through the center, and I just came into this spot right here. And so it's on point, just like that. So all I really need to do is pin that at that spot. I'm going to turn this. I'm going to get one of my other pieces. I'm going to draw a diagonal across there. Remember, and I need to turn my iron down because it was on high, because this is the new Templi fuse. And it is a dry iron, warm iron, fusible. These are seven inch squares. All right. So I'm going to take another straight pen down through the center and right into that spot right there. And I'm lining it up on that line so I know that I've got it in the correct place. Another thing I can tell you, if you cut 26 inches, you'll notice that it comes right to the edge of your fabric. So. You could almost just line it up with the edge of the fabric and go. Judy wants to know, can you use the new template fuse for regular machine applique? Yes. And I think you'll really like it. When you go on to Sew Steady's site, and we've linked it there for you, um, on the shopping cart, when you're on your computer, you can click on that. On the order page, there's a little video that one of the other educators, Ann Moore, has done so that you can see how that um, works. All right. So now I'll take my tools that I need, and I'm going to just slide this over here. And this is why you see that I'm not going to press away the lines I need because I'm just going to be here, not in here. So I'm just going to take this pin out. And with a warm iron, a warm dry iron, hold it in place. And we're just going to be putting those four on there. Because there's no reason to cover the whole back of your fabric because, you know, it's, it's a waste for one thing. And it is just not necessary. So in this case, it takes a little bit more planning. But that's why I gave you an empty sheet there so that you could kind of draw up a diagram to figure that out. Now, I'm going to start with this one because it's cooled off. And I'm simply going to peel the back off, find a corner that wants to come off. If not, we'll fuse again. Let 
Maybe you're ready to come off. Guess I didn't get out to the corners well enough. That one's fused. started to I can see it's going to definitely hold it down because it's holding it down right now which is great maybe I had too low of heat so what temperature of low did you go to I am on polyester All right. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's better. So, do, ladies and gentlemen, don't turn your iron down too low. I am on polyester right now. There we go. Got one spot there. You'll know when you start to pull it back whether you've got it on or not. For those that are just joining us, can you tell them again what the Templi Fuse is? Templi Fuse is what you would use instead of the Heat and Bond Light. It is a brand new product that so steady is carrying and we're finding that it holds the edges better when we do the Templi fuse technique but I will tell you that I just didn't have my iron actually warm enough because there it comes right off Perfect. There we go. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to come back over here, over here, and I'm going to turn this so that all of that is down, and you'll see my lines are still there. And we don't want to press any more until we're completely finished with our top. Okay? Now I'm going to use just a couple pens because this is pretty large. And the first part that I'm going to be quilting is two big sections here. And so I'm going to put those in the area that we have. Whoops, got my paper on the back. There we go. So I'm just holding this nice and flat, pressing it out with my hand, not an iron. Looking underneath there to see, there's my Templi fuse. And so now what I'm going to be doing, you'll notice I'm doing a center line and then two more each side. So I'm doing five lines each way, a center line, two left, two right. So let's go over to the sewing machine. Got to get my stuff here. We're 
over at the sewing machine. They are wondering, when are you adding your batting? I already have. So I think we just need to show again. Now I laid this out because I wanted you to see, if you've not seen it before, this is called insert and table polish. The insert and table polish that comes with a little cloth is what I use to shine up, that's the way I say it, but it's actually to slicken up my table, my sew study table. So you can see my sew study table over here. I've already polished it up. I put on my mat, and those of you that are asking about my batting, it's fusible fleece. I already fused it onto the back of the peaker fabric. This is the peaker fabric. It's the one that once we cut the top, it's going to show through here. So that fusible fleece was added there. Now, if you want to use batting, you can. I use fusible fleece because it makes my table mats a little firmer. So what I'm going to be doing first is making those two lines and they're also wondering about a backing fabric. We'll back it when we're completely done because we're going to use the circles and straights tool to make it a circular project and that will be my backing. But it's going to be the same color as your top fabric. Right, same okay. as here. You guys are on it tonight? Let we don't mind you asking questions. That's perfect because first of all it shows you're with me and second of all it keeps me from making a big mistake. You had just mentioned the polish, and before you move on, Judy wants to know, can you use the polish on the grid glider? Yes, and we recommend that you do that. So when I polish my um, table, I also polish my grid glider, definitely. They come to you pre-polished, uh, the grid gliders, not the tables. You always should polish your table right out of the box brand new. All right, so now what I'm going to be doing is, I am going to be sewing those lines and um, we're going to sew one completely down, and then I'm going to switch to the other direction, and then I'm going to use my echo guide to make it easier. So you got to keep track of where you are, and just remember, I'm doing a circle. So this out here in this corner is going to cut off. So I'm going to use that as my margin. So I'm not going to worry about that. When I get out there, I'm going to just travel over to another line. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my foot down and for that very same reason I am not going to worry about tying off my threads. I'm just going to pull up my bobbin thread because that's going to get cut off anyway back there in the back. So I'm going to take my needle down, my needle up and I have a dark green thread here for you tonight and a little secret. If you wanted to do this line, or all these lines, you're going to be doing 10 lines. If you wanted to do them in a cotton thread, it's no problem. But when we get ready to do the um, template quilting through that little um, extra stable, or not stabilizer, but sticky um, template fuse, I'm trying to think um, what it is. I'm going to show it to you so I don't keep forgetting it. But this is what the, the top of it looks like, the cover of it, I should say. This is the template fuse with the directions. And if you are stitching through that, I have found that sometimes the cotton thread tends to shred. So I like to just simply use polyester thread and it eliminates the problem. Question. How often would you recommend using the table polish and polishing their table and their grid glider? You'll know because it doesn't glide. But I would say, um, depending on how often you use it, I, I do mine once a week. So, and sometimes more than that, depending on how much I have actually used um, 
my surface. Can you also use the grid glide, or sorry, excuse me, the polish on a wooden sewing table? It won't do any good. It's an acrylic shine, so no, it wouldn't do any good. You can use it on your inserts, and like this machine came with its own table that's like a cream color, and I could do it on that. I could shine that up, but if it has that pebbled surface, it's not going to do any good, so don't waste your polish. Tell us again what weight thread. I am using a 40 weight. I'm using a 40 weight Guterman polyester thread right now. So I've pulled my thread up. I've got my tails here. I'm just going to go back a little bit and come back to this spot, which means as soon as I can do that, I can take those threads and cut them off. But I'm going to just put this, and remember, again, this is why it's nice to have not only the long ruler, and I do have stable tape on the back of it, but to also have this extra space in front. Now, if you've not been with us to sew straight lines, we have to measure because it's a quarter of an inch from our needle to the edge of the foot. And so I'm just going to stitch, pushing my fabric through here. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to line up. I'm going to push again, moving it through my machine. We're now dead center in that center, which means nothing other than we're halfway through that line. And for those of you that haven't been with us through all of the, well, COVID times, I guess I should say, I set my machine to a medium speed and turn my foot pedal, the one on the floor, around to the back and simply floor it. So I've got kind of my own stitch regulator just because I floor it. So it's going as fast as it possibly can because of the fact that I have limited the speed right here on my machine. Now, for now, I'm just going to do this again and I'm going to cut that thread because I want to go and do the other long line. So we're going to come back here, and you can see even though it's not basted or anything, everything is staying nice and flat. I just keep smoothing that out. I'm coming out here where I told you was beyond where we're going to be doing it. And just a little hint, I really don't need to bring my bobbin thread up because since I have a cutter, it's holding it in place. So I can simply start stitching. I'm going to go back on that line and then I'm going to line this up and I won't have any bird's nest or any nastiness down there because I used my cutter. So I like to tell you what works, why it works and what won't work and why it won't work because you know we're all about saving time and if I don't have to stop and pull up that needle thread then I'm saving time or that bobbin thread excuse me. template with the groove in it for the stitch in the ditch instead of using echo yes you could well not echo but for what we're doing right here okay I think you're talking about the sashley tool or something like that Sandra wants to know which fusible fleece you use I use thank you for asking Sandra because I do like the one I use I use the Pelon 987 F. There is another one by a different company that I tried using and I thought it was going to be good because it was a little thicker, but it shrinks like you would not believe. And so I'm just, you know, saying that in, you know, take, take your um, experience and that way you don't have to, you know, worry or wonder this one doesn't shrink whereas that one does. So I've got these two, and I'm going to cut that thread wherever it might be, or maybe I already did. Nope, it's over here. And I've got my two main lines. Now, I could go ahead and use my ruler. I'm going to do an inch apart. 
Now if my foot from my needle to the edge of the foot is a quarter of an inch, I need three quarters of an inch. So I could use this and go one mark, two marks, three marks, line it up on my previous stitching and set that there and stitch. But if I have my, uh, excuse me, my echo guides, they're so much easier to use. And so I'm going to get them here and show you. If I wanted to make it a half inch, I would use this one. If I wanted to make it three-fourths of an inch, I would use this one. And if I want to make it an inch, which I do, I'm going to use this one. So what I'm going to be doing is putting those back and this has what's called an expansion slot. And that's where it fits around your foot, but it also works perfect if you'll just take your temp or your um, echo guide so you can read the one and then just kind of dive it down onto your thread. You can just push it underneath there and your thread's not going to get caught and then when you lower your foot, it will just pick it up. Now I want to pull it up higher on my foot because I need to be able to move it underneath there. And so that for that reason, I need to be able to, I need to pull it up that way. We've had several on here say that their foot is loose. Is there any troubleshooting that they could do? Okay, they mean this is loose on their foot. I'm sorry, yes. Okay, try doing it upside down. Okay, because it's tighter from the bottom, so try doing it upside down. Now, I know that it's very loose on um, uh, the Viking feet because their foot is a little bit smaller, so I know it's loose on that. The other thing that you can do is you can put a little bit of tape inside there, like your um, this tape here. You can put a little bit across and then kind of break it down. And I'll just take it off to show you what I mean. It would be putting a little piece of tape right across there, cutting that off, and then using a small pair of scissors or even a seam ripper to break a hole and push it so it was down in there so it has tape on each side of it. So it would, would hold that up better. And that will help a little bit. Now, you know what, because you guys are gonna, I want you to know the, re the results of this, so let me just show you on one of the other sizes. So I'm gonna take this piece of this tape, and the interesting part for you is, if this works, you're not gonna take it off, okay? So I've got it this way, and if it's too loose, let's turn it to the back side to begin with. Put this little piece of tape across here, and then I'm going to actually use my scissors to get cut right in this spot right here. That'll make it easy enough. And then I'll use my little, my little, well, I can do it right here. See how I'm pulling that down? You don't even have to use scissors, you guys. Just push that down like that. And I want you guys to try this, and I want you to let me know how it works, because I think it will be fine. Now, remember, I'm upside down on this. And I just put that tape through there so it'll take up more space and it'll hug your foot. So give it a shot. Wrong side, piece of tape, just cut through the center and then just push it down there. And I think what you'll find is it's going to fit on your foot just right nicely. All right, so back to the one here. I'm pulling it up. I'm making sure that I've still got it so it rotates and I'm out in that area so nothing's really you know I cut the last one I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up because I think it's longer than I think my I don't even know for sure where I'm at so yeah it was longer I guess I didn't cut it now I got tape uh, this will go clear to New York City and I don't want to go there so there we go okay foot down threads back to the back and let's just cut them off so we don't have all of that there and I'm lining up the edge with the edge of my previous stitching so now I don't have to do anything but set my ruler on the line 
I won't be needing this because I'm going to be guiding this against it. So I set my foot down, make sure we're down and we're in place. I'm going to go back and forth just a smidge. And I will tell you, if you don't have echo guides, just trust me, get them. Because it just saves you so much time. And I will tell you, if you didn't get signed up for the beginner class last time that we started just last Monday, and you want to take it, just keep watching because we're getting ready to announce the dates for the next one. So I'm right here, and I need to do another one on the other side. So I'm just going to turn this like this, use a straight edge, and look what happens when I just stitch parallel to my edge. When this meets the line, I can just turn it around put my ruler on the other side and come back the other way. Now if that scares you to death because you're not very good with your ruler in your right hand, I understand. You can cut your threads and go back and start the other way. It doesn't really matter. And I will tell you guys, having this so steady table makes this so easy because I've got a nice big space to move this through here. And you'll notice that my ruler still is long here. You could be using your little six inch ruler. If you don't have this one, you could use your little six inch. Um, but what I want to tell you is you don't want to fall off of the ends and when it becomes hard for you to reach, it's too far, then, you know, just stop and go a different direction. So I'm going to turn, I don't mean go a different direction, stop and realign. So now I've got my two on this side, and I need to get over to that side. So again, I'm just putting my ruler so it's parallel. I'm going back up. And lo and behold, when this gets to the edge... I had to move because I was going to go off. I want it right against that line. So now I'm ready to come back this direction. If you're having any kind of issues getting your foot set up or easy enough to work with, please let us know. Email us so that I can get in touch with you because I will tell you you're going to fall in love with template quilting once you've got that foot cooperating and able to sew in all different directions. So now I've got to turn this around. And the thing with it is I want you to make sure that you know where your center line is, so we put another one on this side, not another one on this side. That would not be in the right place. So I'm coming down. When the edge touches the previous one, I'm ready to come in this direction. And that's why it's fun to have a margin. And those of you that are in my beginner class, we have margins on all the blocks that we're doing. And that's why we cut them 14 inches so that we can work out in those margins to save us having to tie off and a lot of different things. So there's just many different hints and tips that we like to share with you to make your work easier. Because, you know, if, if I had to tie off every one of these lines, I'd still be on the second line probably. And now I've got six lines finished. I'm finished in this area. And so I'm going to cut the, use the cutter, and we're going to go the other direction. So now, if you've got questions, would be a good time to ask them, because we're just kind of doing some straight line quilting here. Oops, got to go to this side. So I'm going to line that up, 
set my foot down away from my ruler, bring it in, and because I cut, I'm able to just go back and come forward. I know that many of you watched Stacy and Mindy the other night. I think it was Thursday night. And they introduced the ranges templates and also the um, template fuse. So I think we're really going to love that template fuse. So Barbara wants to know, do those echo guides fit the low and high shaft ruler feet? Yep, they surely do. Carol is curious when you're going to put the backing on. It will be the last thing that we do. So hopefully you can stay with us. It won't take us too long here. And is, and is that just because we're doing something different with the backing or you didn't want the lines on the back? We're going to use our circle sewing tool to put the backing on so it'll make a perfect circle. We're not binding it. So you'll see I don't have to put any binding because I'm going to use my circle. If you wanted to bind this, well, okay, that's not in my fun. I like this to stay as fun as it can, and so that's why I'm not going to do a binding. But you can. I'm to this way, so I got to go to this way. You can actually put your binding on with the circle sewing tool also. All right, so I've got to turn and come down here. I always stop with that in the needle in place. I've got a question from Leah about the Sashley tools. She wants to know, is the slot you sew in the width on each of them um, the amount? She wants to know, what is the difference between them? That I really don't know. I've only used the Sashley tools for adding the sashing. And I know that Donna McCauley has one of the rulers that you can use like for stitching in the ditch. Kind of the same concept. I just find this is my easiest way to do it. Darla wanted to know, is there only one set of echo guides? Yes. There's only this, these three sizes. And they come as a set. They right? come as a set. And I know I used these a couple of weeks ago on a project and I made the comment we need to try and see if we can get them to make us a one and a half inch so we could go farther away even though we could easily do that with this template and this echo guide that's one inch all we would have to do would be to measure over a half inch more with our ruler and we could easily do that now this is my last line so you can see here in the center, I've got my five lines going each direction. One more question before you move on. Go right ahead. Um, what besides cut work projects, or I would assume template projects, could you use the template fusible for? Anything, applique, anything that you would use a lightweight fusible. So I am finished with that echo guide. Counting my lines, making sure I got everything. And remember I said we are going to have the center of what we're doing eight inches down from the middle here. That's going to be our center. So you can see this. If I line this up there, then 
all I need to do there's my center so I'm gonna go ahead and mark that that way on all of these I'm lining up my 8 inch mark in the center there I'm gonna take my pens out right here center 8 inches and last but not least I'm gonna repeat it center line up all right so now what I'm gonna be doing is I am going to get my crosshair grid my 8 point crosshair grid and I am going to set it so that the center is right there. Hold on just a moment. I gotta move the camera. Did they not see any of that other? I don't think so. I was dealing with a hacker, so I was sorry. All right, so let me show you again here. I put this in the center and I came down here. So this is eight inches. Eight inches is in the center. And so I just drew across the bottom and up the top like this. I rotated. I put this so that eight inches there and I lined it up here, came down here, and I'm drawing up this way. Okay, turned, eight inch in the center, line up that line. Ooh, I'm glad I did this one again, you guys. That one is way off. It's this line, not that line. Okay, and I did the same thing on the other one. I might as well check it since I'm around here. That one is good. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our crosshair grid, and all I have here is a backwards L. So I am going to put the corner of that L where those lines meet right there. And this is going to go out that direction. This was going to go up that direction. And all I need are the top and the left and the right. Okay? The top, the left, and the right. And so now what I'm going to be doing is I am going to take my heart template, I believe it looks like this, if you've never seen a heart template, and I am going to be lining up this line that goes across here. I'll get my black paper, it's much easier for me. This line that goes across here with this line here, those line up. That's going to go on my lines going side to side. This is going to go on my lines going up and down. So I'm going to lay that right here. Where that center is, I put my needle down right in that area. I am going to pull this thread up. And because I have a super busy fabric, I am just going to go side to side here a little bit, and then I'll be able to cut it off. I'm going to put this around here, line up, line up, and you're going to have to trust me looking to the back that I'm lined up. Half of my heart, turn it around line up the same things only they're just backwards because I turned it upside down which means tape on both sides you guys this one has tape on both sides and now I'm going to come back to the middle I don't need to take it off I can just swing it down here and now this line is lined up 
that line is lined up. And some of you are probably thinking, but you didn't draw that line. Well, you can draw that line. I've got a small short line, but it'd probably be easier if you drew all of those four lines. I'm going to come in here and again I can simply rotate this around and line it up over here. Now Megan on our handout there is a template for the tail and I need that cut out. It's right here. So. I simply used my arc template, my four inch arc template, and a straight edge to make that. Now here's what I'm going to show you that you may never have thought of. I don't have a template to do that, but I've made myself a paper template, and I'm just going to lay it down. It's going to go just like this. So the little point is going to go right in there. And I can position that however I want. And I'm going to draw that. I think I want it to come back just a little bit. And you can make your own however you want. But I did this one so that I can actually use templates to, to make these same shapes. But I wouldn't want to go free motioning this. Maybe you, you feel comfy doing that. Can you guys see that at all? Get my blue marker, please. You brought it back over. I did I bring it back over. So I'm just going to draw this. I know they can see oh, that, that better. better. So this was my template that I included on your handout so that you would know where to go. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use this little four inch arc that comes in your sampler set. And I'm going to set that there and you can see. Now guess what? When we press this away, if it's not exactly on that line, it's no big deal. But I'm going to use this to measure a quarter of an inch away here. And I'm just going to stitch down to the bottom. I'm going to use a straight edge. And guess what? My heart template has a straight edge. I'll turn it so you can see it so I can use my quarter of an inch marker here. And I'll stitch across that. And then the same, the same thing on this side. All I want to do is get back to that very center. So I'm going to take it up against my foot and I'm going to put this side of my template this side right here, the right side, right where I wanted to finish. And so now I'm going to stitch right back to that middle. And like I said, because this is a busy, busy fabric, I am just going to stitch a little bit over one of the lines and then I'm going to just simply cut my thread. Now I've got my shamrock in there. So what I'm going to do I'm going to cut this thread from the top so that everything is cut there. And I'm going to cut this out so you can see how it's done. I'll need to do the other ones because otherwise I can't go on with this. So they will be pretty fast and easy. But I want you to see how this works. So I use a sharp seam ripper and I just prick underneath here to get it lifted up. And then I just kind of go like this. And if it's smooth, that means your fabric's there. If it feels rough, it means you went through two layers and you're now down to the fusible fleece or your batting. So I'm just going to cut through there. And I like to use these little scissors. They're called the four and three quarters or four and a half inch embroidery snips because it's like a tweezer here. And so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to cut right close there. And you have to kind of rotate this so that you can get in the correct direction. You want to leave like a sixteenth of an inch of fabric.
Did I move everything? I'm sorry no, if I did. I think you're good. You got to rotate that around. And when we're all finished, we will obviously be pressing this, and this raw edge will press down. So when I come down here, even though that's a point, I'm going to go across so that I can turn and come back and go this way. But I think you can see why these scissors work, these snips, they actually are, work so well is because of the fact. And get back here just a smidge here. There we go. Is because I can actually get my hands in there and do what I need to do. So there's one of my hearts. And some of you are probably saying, why didn't she use more contrast? I put these together and I kind of liked this contrast as, as kind of being just a little bit there. And so that's why I went with this direction on it rather than having a really sharp contrast like maybe even a white on top and a green on the back. That would have been a little more than I could deal with. Everybody has their own opinion and that's what makes the world go round. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch the others because you saw how fast they stitch. And then I can show you how to do the circle because I can cut this out at any point. I just can't press it till I get it finished. But you can see there how I've now got my little piece there. And when I cut the rest of this out, we'll have our shamrock. Now, if you wanted a four-leaf clover, you can do a four-leaf. You just got to figure out how you're going to put a stem in there so it doesn't look like just four hearts. When I'm doing this part of it, I usually go sit at one of my, um, like my drawing table where I got a big space because I honestly am twisting it around all the time. So like maybe your dining room table would allow you to, you know, twist and turn that. Yeah, I'd like to get it closer for the people. You keep twisting it so it kind of makes... I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I just want to get a close-up, but it kind of it's like right in teacups or something. Right in teacups. That's great. If I wrote a teacup now, that'd be a bad deal. I wanted to make sure I was past my stitching. So you can see there, and I'll pull this up so you can see close enough. Now when this, am I too close? Oh nope, yeah. There. This right here, all of this will get pressed down. This line will get pressed out. So let's go ahead and let's do this again over here. Because like I said, I've got to do this before I move on. I want to see where, which line I'm, I'm working with this one. I'm going to make it blue right here and right there and so you could do all the marking at once it's just as for me it seems just as easy to just go ahead and remember it's only these that you need and I only need a short little one there and it doesn't matter which heart you do first you could do the top the side whatever foot down cut it last time so I'm just gonna go up and back so I'll be able to cut that thread off oh. so hey everyone what are your questions I wanted to give this to you so that you'd have a little bit of time to do this. It's not hard to do. It takes longer to get your pieces cut, pressed, and ready to go. And once you see the way I finish this, you'll understand why I say it's a pretty fast project. And 
of course, you could use this shamrock any way you wanted. You don't have to do it on this kind of a thing. But anytime I can do something, make it go fast, make it be secure without all the extra steps, that's what makes it fun. So Ardith wants to know, how are you going to stop the raw edges from fraying? And that's why we have that fusible on the back. And that's going to fuse it down. Now I've lost my little template. Do you know where it went to? Oh, your paper template? My paper template. So while she's hunting it, I'll just go ahead and draw through here what I can. You know, where there's a will, there's a way. This might even be better, you never know. The heart you're using, wasn't that a three inch? That is a three inch. Okay. And so now what I'm going to be doing, that kind of worked well. Okay, so now what I'm going to be doing is using my 4-inch arc and my spacing gauge so that I've got a quarter of an inch spacing. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to use a straight edge. The one on my heart will work. I'm going to measure. And I'm going to come right to there, and I'm setting this back in place, and I need to measure at the center so I get right back to the center spot, and now I'll come right back up there, and I'm just going to come back down a little bit, and I'm going to cut my threads. Now why do I feel like I can do that? Because of the fact that this is a busy fabric, nobody's going to know the difference. So for our friends who don't have this template, the hearts template, could the border heart be used instead? Um, it's a total different concept. Um, you could play with it and see. I really don't think it's going to be a good one because it doesn't have this shape in it. But you can sure play with it and see. So Sonia had a question, and I love your answer for this, so I was going to let you do it versus me typing it oh, in. Oh, this ought to be great. Do you have to have a lot of pressure holding the templates in place? No, I actually call it fairy fingers. Which is why I love it. And that's because if you put too much pressure, your template will not... Oops! Got ahead of myself, everyone. Got to put my crosshair grid on. If you put too much pressure on it, then it's, it's, it's hard to move your templates. And so that's why I say it's kind of like fairy fingers. You're supporting your template, but you are not forcing it down into the fabric. So while I've got this here, I'm going to go ahead and lay my piece on because I know that comes right out of that center like that. Right there. This wasn't the way I intended you to use it, but hey, it works. And I'll have that drawn on there so that I can go ahead and stitch it. So, needle down, lining it up, back and forth a little bit. And when I stop right here, simply going to go ahead and cut that thread I can tell you that using these templates can be so much fun when you're in um, the designing stage like you know when I came over to get ready for tonight I knew what I had in my mind but I hadn't really mapped it out and that's where the stitching line discs come in. They are simply to be used for drawing and makes it easy to get everything mapped out so you know what you want to do and what your spacing is. How else would I have known to tell you eight inches down? I had to do it first and then measure it. And it just makes it easier to map that all out on paper first. 
And so since we wouldn't get the right shape if we used this template and just drew it, we have what are called stitching line discs. Megan, mine's right there around the corner. It has a pre precious little spot that it stays in. And this is what they look like. They come in eight different sizes. And so when I was on paper, I had this in here like this and used it with a pencil. And so I was able to just draw around on that with that stitching line disc. And can you tell the people who may never have done that why you can't just draw around the template? Right, it wouldn't be the right size because it would be, it has to be a quarter of an inch away and it wouldn't be the right size. And if anybody has any questions on that, let me know and I'll actually get a piece of paper and I'll draw for you. I need to get my piece right here and my spacing gauge and I'm going to line it up stitch down use my straight edge quarter of an inch stitch back to that spot there push this up against and then to get right back in the center I'm allowing a quarter of an inch and I'm just going to come back on that so that I've secured it and I cut it and we only have one more to go. Now did anybody need to see me draw that Megan? Anybody say anything? No. Okay. We're good then. Alright, so I'm going to get my ruler, there it is, and check which line I'm supposed to be using and it's this one right here. So I'm going to make that darker so y'all can see it. And I'm going to come in here and we're going to make that line, that, this one, and this one. So I want you to know, Roberta has just tried that tape trick for the foot. Did it work? And it works. Perfect! I'm so excited. I'm excited for you, Roberta, and anybody else. So try that tape trick. Turn your template or your, your echo guides upside down and then just put that tape through there. So I'll have to patent that, right? That way you all can do it. All right, so I've got those lines drawn and I've got my template for my shamrock stem. And I'm going to go ahead and put my needle down. Remember I cut. So I'm just going to line this up go forward and back a bit I can cut this off because I did that forward and back I'm gonna flip this around I'm gonna go this way first this time just to show you you don't have to do the same thing every time When you get here, you're going to come around this way. Now, if you wanted your hearts to look heavier, you could actually come back and go back, come up here and go back, and that would be double stitched so that you could have it, you know, and heavier. Now, it might mean some more thread cutting than you wanted, but you can do it. I mean, not, not cutting, tying, but you can do it. So if you wanted that heavier, a heavier stitching, so in other words, when I got here, I would simply reverse and go back down to the center and then come here and come back. And so, you know, it's, it's totally up to you what you want there. But I just want you to realize you can stitch what I call over stitch, which means you stitch it a second time, sometimes a third. All right, so I've got this here. Need my spacing gauge, my four inch arc space this out looks kind of odd it's gonna work come down here and if you don't like the shape of mine go ahead and draw your own I won't be offended I would love for you guys to share some of your projects on the Westerly by me site so we can see them so that that way others can see 
what they might be missing out on by not sh coming to our parties on Saturday night. So I'm completely finished stitching. I went forward and back. I'm going to cut that. All right, just wanted to make sure, yep, I've got all four of them finished. All right, so now what we're going to do is I am going to change my foot to my regular foot. So I'm going to take this one off, and I'm going to get my regular foot. It's just a regular multi-purpose foot. I'm going to put that on there. And I'm going to set my machine back for a standard straight stitch. Now, everything I've done so far, my feed teeth were down. But when I set this back to a standard straight stitch, my machine is going to automatically bring up my feed teeth for me. Now, I could leave this on here, but I can't see my holes in my table. So I need to take my mat off. And the first thing I'm going to do is find out what is 12 and a half inches, and I'm going to go out to this direction. So Megan's kind of going to have to pan for me to get it out there so we can see. And you can use this, which I'm going to do, or you can use what's called the circles and straights tool. Okay? So if you don't have holes in your table, maybe you don't even have a table, this will work for you. So what you would do is you would put this on. This is a sticky mat, just like what I've been using. You would line it up front to back and side to side. The needle must line up exactly with this line. So I don't have the back off, so mine's not sticking, but I'm just going to show you how you could do this. We are going to be making a 25 inch circle. So clear out here is the 25. So we would be using this piece so that that right there was exactly on the 25, just like that. That's going to be our center. So if you don't have a table with holes, that's what you can do. Now I have a table with holes, and if you have a table with holes, and you don't have one of these, you need to get what's called the circle sewing tool. And the circle sewing tool is available on Sew Studies website. And what I'm going to show you is it's got two little tabs right here and the same pen that that blue piece had. And so what I need to do is I need to measure out to get 25 circle, 25 inch diameter, I'm going to measure from my needle, and it needs to be right there. So that's my pen. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to pull this in. I think you can see that. I'm going to pull this in so those holes go right there. So when I take this off, when I measure from my pen in, I am just like right at that number. Okay? So I am good there. So I'm going to bring this in, and I'm simply going to set this down so that the very center is on the pen. OK. And now I'm going to take my back. And remember, we marked that way back when we started. And I'm going to set this right on there also. Now, you might think that I would leave these so they're matched up. OK, square to square. Can you see that? This is a flat edge here. But I don't do that. So this would be square on top of square. And I need to put my piece back on so it doesn't go anywhere. But I don't do that. I actually rotate this piece, the top piece, which is actually the back piece, so that it's offset. So I think you can see that. So right back here, can they see clear back there? So it's offset 
So every corner looks like that. And why do you do that? That is going to stabilize my grain. And if you were making napkins and you didn't have anything in there, it would make it so that your napkins don't do any kind of rippling at all. So this is just a little secret that makes it so when you do these circles, it stabilizes. So I'm looking here to see, yes, I'm on my fabric, just like I plan to be. And so what I'm going to do is, I am going to start right here. And I am going to put my foot down. I don't need to, remember we're regular sewing, my feet teeth are up. So I'm going to stitch forward and I'm going to use my reverse and go back. And now, can they see right here? Yep. So all I need to do, I got my nice slick table. I got my hands here just kind of patting this down. It's a regular stitch length. So they're starting to think. Margie says, but if you sew all the way around it, how are you going to pull it through? Oh, I'm ready for you guys. I got even a trick for that. So if you'll just even go wake up the iron, put it on hot, Megan, and wake it up. Okay, it's hot, Lennon. Clear up. Turn it as far as it'll go to the right. Okay. Clockwise. You turn it clockwise. So you can see that I'm just patting this down as I go. I have a blast with my circles and straights tool or my circle sewing tool with my table. There's so much you can do with it. Now if you wanted to, you could have had this in two pieces and you could have hemmed the straight edges, overlapped them, it had to be a bigger piece, and then you could have sewn all the way around and turned it like a, you know, like a pillowcase or an envelope or whatever. But this way, we don't have to do all that extra work. You'll see. Obviously, there's a question. No. Um, Linda just says, sorry, not Linda, Carol says, that's why I love you. You have a trick. Of course you have a trick. Okay, so here is about seven inches from my finger, which is right here, to where this is an opening here. And I like to leave myself a little bit bigger to get it through easily because my close-up is not hard to do at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew, I'm going to reverse, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my machine with a basting stitch. So I'm going to go to a larger basting stitch, probably about 5.0 length will do it. Gosh, this one does a humongous one. Nope, hang on. I was setting my needle to the left. I don't want to do that. Now we're going to do a length of four. There we go. All right. So I've got a length of four. I'm going to go ahead and break this thread right here. I'm going to pull that thread out so I've got a little bit to go with. I'm going to start right back in the same spot and base this closed. And I usually go a little bit slower so that I can work with my fabric because you can ease that in there. All right, so I've got my basting stitch. I'm not going to cut it this time. I'm going to raise my needle so that I can have the tail of that. I'm going to go underneath and cut my bobbin thread. Now, I have to cut all the way around here. Don't worry about this little piece. You'll see why here in just a moment. And I recommend that you use pinking shears. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pin off over here. I'm taking it completely off of that so that I don't get penned. And just so that you can see when we turn it over, this is what our stitching looks like. 
we've got our cross hatching, we've got our shamrock, we've got our circle, and we've got it offset. So now what I'm going to do is I do this first in the area that I did the basting because we need to leave that longer. Okay? So what I'm going to do is right there's the end of it. I'm going to come in and I'm going to stick cut just a little ways away. And right there where that basting is, I don't want to cut my thread, I'm going to go out to about 5 eighths of an inch so that I've got space there. And then here's where it stops, so I'm going to go back in and I'm cutting right, oh, I'm leaving maybe a quarter of an inch at the most, but the whole idea is those of you that have done garment sewing know that when you're working with curves, you have to do all of this extra clipping called notches and all that kind of stuff. Megan's snickering because she's thinking about 4-H projects back in the day. But what we're going to do is we're just going to clip right up against there. And this will save us from having to do any of that notching. So I don't know if any of you are out there that are going to be joining me live in Florida in a couple of weeks. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just posted that about five minutes ago. Oh, really? You can explain what Florida is, because I wasn't for sure, and I didn't want to tell them the right I'm going to be doing the OSQE event. I'm not going to be on the floor um, in the booths, but I will be teaching classes. So I know that there are two classes that still have openings. So if you're in the Lakeland, Florida area during March 18th to the 20th, you can join us, go on to sewingexpo.com and click on the Lakeland, Florida event and you can see what's going on there. Now, I got my thread here. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to the ironing board and I'm going to press this back in the shape that that circle should be. Okay? And then I'm going to flip it over and I will press back this way. And it takes us longer to get over there and change it than me just going over there and pressing. Now, I don't want to press anything else because I don't want this press. So I'll be right back. And I'll let Megan entertain you. Oh, that's scary. We did have some questions. Um, could you use, instead of pinking shears, could you use a rotary cutter with a pink, peaking blade? You sure could. It's just, um, it, yeah, it's, it, that would be fine. I don't know if you heard her. Donnell says yes, that would work. Susan wants to know, would you still do the notching with that if there was a gentle curve? No notching? Okay. Okay. So the whole idea of this is this is basted in a perfect circle. Oh, hold on. They're not all put together. I don't mean basted, it's, this is basted here and we're going to take it out. But because of that basting, we've been able to press to a perfect circle. So we don't have to then try and do that after we've pulled it through. So where's my long thread? Here it is. 
and I'm just going to go ahead and it always pulls first out so I'm just going to go ahead and am I on the screen so they can see me yes okay I'm just base this was a basting thread and you can see how I'm just kind of picking underneath there and I'm going to tell you again what I tell you every time if you don't have a good sharp pointed seam ripper it's time okay so now that I've got this much I may be able to get it to pull it's always more difficult when you have that batting in there there we go and it's better to leave yourself a bigger space so you can get it turned than it is to be frustrated by a little tiny space all right so there we go so I'm gonna go inside now and go to the other side and pull it through Eleanor Burns calls this birthing. I'll let you decide if you think that's a good name. <laughs> and then I'm just going to take my hand and I'm going to go all the way around and I'm going to kind of push that out. Now once I have cut this all, then I can press it. But I think I can get this done enough that you can see what we're going to do because I don't want to do any pressing yet because then all of our template quilting will be for not right so I've got that oh look it just laying perfect okay so now I've got this nice rounded mat and after I press it you know I've got my edge all good right here and then this is going to lay just like it should because of the fact that I told it so by pressing it. I said this is where you go, like it or not. And this works on making napkins and other things too, anything rounded. So now what I can do, I don't think I'm going to do it because I haven't pressed, but I can put my circle sewing tool, instead of putting it here, I'm going to move it in one. No, actually I'm going to leave it right there and move my needle. So this is the same place that I had it. Like I said, I'm not going to stitch because I want to press it first, but I'm going to show you how I would do it. Right there's my center. You think I can do this, Megan? I bet I can't. I think I can. All right, I think I can. I'm going to start a little bit before my opening, and I'm going to get that rolled out right like that. And what I'm going to do is set it for my regular straight stitch, but I'm going to move my needle over and I'm going to see if I can get it so it does a top stitch here. Oh, I can do it. All right. Are you guys ready? I want to test first in several places to make sure I've got it set right. All right, let's go ahead and set this needle down. And here we go. So I'm going to sew right at that edge because I put my needle in the left needle position. If you can't go over that far, then you would need to move your move it in and get it set up like you want. So there has been a question. You've got half your foot on, half your foot off. How does that work with the fabric? Is that okay? Does that work? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's not a problem. 
but we're coming up here to where my pins are. I'll tell you what, if some of you guys get loving this stuff, you should be making these and open yourself an Etsy store. Debbie wants to know, could you do a decorative stitch here? I plan time? to do another one. I plan to do another row of decorative. So yes, you sure can. And I'll show you what I'm planning to do. So I'm right here. I never sew over my pens. And I'm just right ahead of this. I don't even know that you would need to press it. I'm just rolling it out. Because I don't like to see, you know, the back coming to the front type thing. So I'm just rolling that out. And because it's on that pen, it's, going, it's automatically going around that circle. And I don't have to worry about it. And it lays flat because of the fact that I offset those fabrics. Now I apologize because when I'm doing this I really can't talk to or I won't do a very good job. Now Elaine says, I thought you weren't going to stitch it yet. Now Elaine, she wasn't going to iron it. I'm not going to press it. Press it. But I decided to go ahead and stitch it without pressing because I can see that it's working. I'm almost around. So I'm just pulling this out. I've got it on the pen. I don't know that you can see it right over clear. Here's my hand and clear over here. It's on the pen. So that's why I'm able to use both of my hands here to keep it right for a perfect little top stitch that's right on the edge. Now I will say we've had a couple asks before we finish today. Can we measure out how far the wish table is? Because they want to know size wise. Okay, I will tell you that the wish table is 22 and a half by 25 and a half. It will be dependent, like I have a big throated machine. This one has almost 14 inches. So for my needle over this way is almost 14 inches. So your wish table on your machine may have more out to the left because your machine does not have as deep of a throat. So from my needle out to this direction, Megan, that's 12 and a half there. So here is, so it's like 19 inches out that direction. So for those that we're asking, I hope that helps. Now, here's where I'm coming back to. I'm gonna go ahead, I did not backstitch there. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim those threads because I'm going to butt up and backstitch just like I would with anything. And before I stop, I'm going to go ahead and cut. But before I take this off, Megan, I want you to show them pan out there so I can, they can see that I had it on that pen going around just like this okay so now I'm going to take that off of there and show you I would then after I'm finished I'm going to press this press that outside edge there when I get all these lines off it's going to look a whole lot better but I still need to go ahead before I do any pressing and cut these out. So you're going to be able to use this on your table with, you know, whatever in the center, maybe some candles, maybe some uh, flowers, a vase, whatever. And you're going to have this in all four spots. It's finished as far as I don't have to do any hand stitching or anything like that. The only thing I need to do is press this. So what I want to do before we stop today is cut out this one spot here so that I can actually show it pressed. And remember, I take it in and go like that so that I can make sure I only have one layer gone. And Patsy wants to know if you're going to clip in the lines. Now you could, 
but we didn't put any fusible in the in the line. I didn't Not put any. The, um, that's correct. I didn't put any of the um, any um, of the template fuse in there, so I really can't do anything there. But I thought about that too, Patsy, especially the ones in the middle, pulling some of those. If out. you want to put the template fuse on a whole back, you could surely do that. Wouldn't be a problem at all. If you want to do more quilting, do more cross hatching in this area, that's fine. You don't want to get down into this area. Can they see me? Yes, they can. Okay. Well, they can see what you're doing. I can see what I'm doing. That's all I care. And that little voice you hear is our cat. And he's telling us it's probably time for food, so. Um, what were th what was the decorative stitch you were going to use? Okay, just give me a second okay. here. They, they just want to know. Keep me on my toes. And in that case, I shouldn't have taken it off the pen, but it's no big deal. I can always put it back on the pen. And some of you are asking if you can rewatch this later. Yes, this will be archived as soon as we're done. We upload it. It will be archived to um, So Steady's Facebook page. So there we have that. And I'm just going to, since I have a mic on, I'm going to hand it to Megan. Megan, just press in this area. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a decorative stitch. And I have plenty of decorative stitches to choose from. And I'm going to use one that doesn't have a ton of stitching because the more you stitch in there, the more um, it's it's just kind of bulks it up is what I'm trying to say. And so if you she, can believe it, that was just one pass with the iron. Yeah, she just one pass and everything is is it's held in place. The lines are gone, and you've got your little shamrock there. All right, so the decorative stitch that I'm going to do looks like this on the screen. Okay, we are going to do that stitch right there, I think. You can leave me over here so I can look, because I got a bunch of stitches. I did this one a couple weeks ago when we were stitching. You know what, I think I'm going to do this one. That's pretty cool. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back, only this time, like I said, I'm going to move in a couple of positions because I'm going to be doing the decorative stitching. And so when I put this on here, I'm putting it right back in that center spot. Trust me, I know you can't see it, but trust me. And I want to make sure I've got it laid out flat, so I'm just kind of checking this way. And I need to move it in one more space because I'm just too close to the edge. So I'm going to reach underneath here and move this in one more space. And if you were using the other piece, the circles and straights tool, you would actually just pick up that whole thing. Now, when I do this decorative stitch, I want it to be just like it is on the screen. But you can see there, this is fine, we got it. I could flip it so that it was the other direction. But for what we're doing, I think the first direction is the best. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start anywhere and put the foot down the needle in and we're going to go around. So why I said not to do one that has a lot of stitching, first of all it takes a lot of time and second of all, like I said, it kind of can cause your fabric to get a little bit, I don't know, it just kind of is ouchy with that. It gets a little bit heavy or thick or whatever. And in a minute, you'll see this as it comes around. That's pretty. Can they see that? Mm-hmm. 
Now at that point, if you wanted to switch threads, maybe you want to switch to even a metallic. My fabric has a little bit of metallic in it. I could have switched to a metallic thread because you're not going through any of that extra fusible that's underneath there, the template fuse. So you can see that, you know, we've, in a little less than two hours, we've done pretty much, I had it cut out ahead of time, but I didn't have everything ready and fused and I had to mark it. So you can see that you can do this in a fairly reasonable amount of time. You could do just one of the little shamrocks on a smaller, like even a placemat or maybe even a mug rug. Just so many options that you can do. I wanted to show you how much fun it is to use the circles, whether it's on the table or whether you're using the circles and straights. And we're almost around, Megan. So any last minute questions while I'm finishing this up? This has been a lot of fun. You could use this same concept and put different things instead of the shamrocks in there. I just wanted to have some quilting in this. And if you wanted to, you can even go back now and you could do some more quilting in here through all of the layers. So just so many possibilities. Don't be afraid to even um, combine your embroidery with template quilting. You could have put an embroidery in this spot if you wanted to. So Denise saw a new thread today and you asked her questions and she wants to know. Um, it was rayon and metallic and was 12 weight. Ooh, that sounds pretty thick. Is it thick? I shouldn't say thick. Heavy? I don't know. So we're almost back to where we started, so I'm going to cut my thread out of here so that I can try to join it up. You notice the big word try. So here we come. I'm going to kind of slow down so I can watch and see what we got going on. And at this point, I'm going to press my bullseye, which will stop when it's done with that particular. And you can see it, it is going to stitch in the same place, and then I cut it. So I came pretty close. That's what it looks like. Oh, I'm out of view. So let me pull it out here so that you can see my stitching. Can they see it there? Where can they see it best? Maybe you need right. to reposition the camera. Right there's fine. Okay, so that you can see that. So except for the cutting, I am pretty much finished. And as soon as I get that done, I'll have a new mat for my table. So thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll see you next time.